Hello and welcome to Knife Delights. Today we are going to be taking a look at the K-Bar 1226 Little Fin. And this knife was sent to me by CB Tactical in that big old box of knives. So thanks once again CB for uh, sending this along for me to be able to do a review and comparison with the Buck 102. Now before we get on with the Buck 102, I just wanted to share this with you. I do have this model 1232, which is another uh, small hunting knife in the K-Bar list. Uh, this one is from the 70s or 80s, I think. And the, the stack leather is getting just a little bit loose on it. Somebody found this knife and gave it to me, so um, it was not kept in the, the best condition, I don't think. But it's still a nice knife to have. And this one has the old uh, Cleveland, Ohio tang stamp on it. It was made in Japan. So, just a little bit of a comparison between the two. All right, we'll set that aside. So let's see what the marketing department has to say about this knife. It says it's one of the six classically styled leather handle hunters that li the Little Finn has been a popular member of the K-Bar product line since the early 1900s. It features a brass guard and an aluminum butt cap. Plastic lined leather sheath included. So here's a look at the sheath. Now, right off the bat, uh, this knife is made in China. And it comes in at about uh, $68 list price on the K-Bar website. But as you look on other knife distributors, online channels, or online stores, they run around $50 for this knife. So before we get into the Buck 102 comparison, I just wanted to show a couple other knives here, such as this Marbles knife. Here's the sheath for that. Another little bird and trout. And that's what that looks like. It's not the same quality. Um, but it is made in China, such as this one. Uh, this is in 440A, but it runs about $18 currently. So, $18 versus around $50. Another one that I got is this Queen. And it's got the winter bottom bone uh, covers or handles to it. And I can't remember what this was. I think it was I paid around $25. Maybe they're $30 now. I don't know. Current prices. Whoops. But I just wanted to show some alternatives here. And then I do have this Rough Rider and Bone Stag. And this one currently runs, uh, what is it? Oh, I didn't look up the price on this one. But I think I paid like $12 or $13 for it. So, I wanted to compare because to me, $50 seems like a little bit too much for, you know, a knife made over in China. Comparatively, I got this uh, Baron Sun um, with India Stag handles. And it's in uh, 440 stainless. Very nice, good quality sheath with it. I paid like $39 for it here a couple years ago on sale. I think they're currently around $54.99. But this is made in the USA. So that is one advantage to the Baron Sun. So in price, you're looking very similar in price for uh, you know USA made India Stag. Versus uh, Chinese manufactured stacked leather. So there's a side by side on it. So just wanted to give you some alternatives and kind of put things into perspective just a little bit. Now the uh, K bar here is made in 5CR15 stainless steel, which is similar to a 420HC. 
And again, beautiful job on the stack leather. K-Bar always does well on their stack leather. Nice micarta spacers there. Give some uh, highlights. I also want to say I saw a very similar case. I don't know what they call theirs, but a small hunting knife about this size at a Bass Pro Shop here just the other day. And I want to say it was like $64 in a Bass Pro Shop. I don't know what they cost online. So again, you have a case made in the USA stacked leather for just, just a few dollars more than this one. I did notice on this sheath, and I don't know if it's because of the leather or what, and I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but you see it's really dark here, and when you get here it's very light. And you turn it over and it gets really dark again. We'll pair it to this uh, new sheath here on the right for the 1232. You can see it's a nice even stain job. It just looks very uneven on this. Now that could be just because of the natural materials, but uh, I did want to point that out. Other than that, you know, the sheath is pretty well constructed. It's got rivets in there to to help uh, keep the stitching in place. It's got the model number stamped on the back. So yeah, it's it's a quality sheath. It just kind of struck me odd that it didn't come out quite even there. Well, the reason that uh, CB sent this to me is he wanted me to do a little bit of a comparison with the Buck 102 Woodsman. So here's a Woodsman that I have. And this is one of five of them that I have. This one has a Coco Bolo uh, handle. And this is from the 1990s. And it is one of two that I have in the just 420 HC with the Boss heat treatment. So it'd be very similar steel. But... I tell you, with Buck, with their Boz heat treatment, it makes it, I think, superior than that steel there. Now, I do have another one here. And this is an old school Buck. It's got the two line, inverted two line. And I got this used, so I wanted to be able to show, you know, new condition and new condition. But typically your, your standard buck knife, uh, buck 102, comes with the black phenolic handles instead of the Coco Bolo. Every now and then they come out with a, a special edition of them and you can get different handle materials on them. So let's just look at the size difference here. Okay, so this depends on what the purpose is. The 102 Woodsman is not a bird and trout knife per se, but out of the 100 series fixed blade, it's probably one of the smallest, although they did come out with a fixed blade version of the 110, which might be just a little bit smaller than this. But for all practical purposes in Buck's main line, this is about their smallest uh, hunting knife. So we can see some overall links here. You got right at seven inches on the K bar, and you've got uh, almost almost eight inches, seven and three quarter, or something like that, on the uh, 102. You can see the difference in the blade. You've got about a four inch blade there, and you have about a three and a half inch blade there. Uh, you can see with the 102, you got much more pronounced clip point there. Um, I believe they both are hollow ground. Yes, this is hollow ground also. So, which knife would you want to buy? Well, I should point out that currently the 102 Woodsman on the knife's uh, sales sites runs around $75 with the, with the you know, standard black phenolic uh, handle to it. So which one of these would you buy? So you got $50 versus $75. Well again, it gets back to your purpose. If you are truly trying to skin small game and, and clean fish, uh, 
you know, cleaned pheasant or grouse, partridge. You know, maybe the K-Bar here is a little better knife for that purpose. That's why they're called a burden trout knife. This one here would still do the job. However, you would have the extra blade here to perform some other camp style functions. And more of a skinner if you get some larger game. You can see here I wear a large to extra large glove. So you can see I can get a full four fingers on this one. And on the K-Bar, I can get four fingers on it, but it's tight. You can see my uh, four finger, index fingers wrapped around up there, and it's, it's covering up the, the buck cap there. So, yeah, a lot less handle. But again, it depends on the purpose of what you want the knife for. For me, to just to kind of wrap this up just a little bit, uh, I find this... You know, to be made in China and charging around $50 for it when you've got the other options, like I said, like this Baron Sun or, or this, uh, uh, this is a Marbles here. I, I, I guess I'd have a hard time justifying that when you're getting uh, 5CR15 steel with it. The Buck 420HC with the Boss Heat Treatment, again, is to me... A superior steel and it holds a good edge while still being easy to sharpen that's the other thing about the 5CR is it is easier to sharpen but it does not maintain an edge as long and I think you're going to get a better edge retention out of the buck 102 so those are my thoughts on it I rambled here just a little bit but there is a comparison between the two now I've said you know kind of a little bit negative on the K-Bar here, that's only because of the price. I just, I think that's a little expensive. Again, for, you know, one of these knives made overseas compared to other ones in the same class or category. So here again, you get USA made versus Chinese made. So, until next time, everyone, have a very delightful day. And I'm going to leave a link to my Buck Knives playlist down there in the corner. Make sure and check out my other Buck Knives videos.